Hello everyone, uh, today is Tuesday, it is March 23rd, and it's Commissioner in a new car. <laughs> this is my brand new vehicle, I'm very happy about it, uh, but, uh, but, but what's really happening is today is um, the busiest day uh, for petitions in our uh, petition filing period, which is going on right now uh, through Thursday. This week is the week where all of our petitions are filed. Uh, all of our candidates are getting on the on the ballot for the fall and possible June primaries. Uh, so that is happening right now, uh, and we have until Thursday for that to uh, to to be to to uh, to be done. Um, but Tuesday is usually the day when most of our petitions come in. And why is that? Well, it's because of objections. Um, so because of the way the objection process works, Tuesday is a day that if you file petitions on Tuesday, you give your opponent the least amount of chance to look at your petitions and object to your petitions. If you do it on Wednesday, it's a lot more. If you do it on Thursday, uh, it's even, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a few days more. So if you do it on Tuesday, your opponent only gets about nine days to look at your petitions before they have to file objections. If you do it on Wednesday and Thursday because of the weekends, it ends up being 13 and 14 days. So uh, actually 14 and 13. So it's actually the worst day to file is Wednesday. Um, so some people filed yesterday, but most of the people are filing today, Tuesday, um, uh, and uh, the 23rd. And it's uh, we're open till 4.30 today. We've already had the city slate of Democratic candidates come in today. We had the city Republican candidate already come in. Uh, the county ledge Democrats have already announced that they're coming in at 3 o'clock today. Uh, we've had uh, a few primary candidates that are not designated candidates on the Democratic side come in today and yesterday. So there's a lot of petitions that are being filed. Well, how can you keep track? Well, if you go to onvote.net, under filings on our website. Each night, at the end of the night, we post a spreadsheet that lets you know exactly what petitions have been filed uh, in our office. Uh, and once that is done, uh, we will then uh, uh, go ahead and uh, um, go through the objection process, which may take about three to four weeks. Uh, and then we'll have an official candidates list up um, by the middle of April for the June primary. Uh, and then then after the primary, we will have a candidate's list up for the general election. Uh, so that is what is happening right now at the Board of Elections. Other things that are happening in the state, the budget process is ongoing. And uh, we're very hopeful as elections commissioners that uh, there will be some state funding. Uh, the American Rescue Plan gave a lot of money to the state um, to uh, solve some of their you know, long-term issues with, uh, uh, with with funding, but also hopefully maybe some of that money will go towards elections. The Assembly One House budget uh, has money in it for capital improvements, about $23 million, uh, in there uh, for capital improvements. The Senate One House budget has about $4 million for operational, uh, you know, support for early voting, and, and that's mainly because they there are many in the Senate who want to expand early voting. So uh, if you are interested in helping out elections and get our funding that we need to serve you, the voters, please call your state representatives and say to keep those funding lines in the one house and a budgets in the Assembly and Senate and make sure that by April 1st when they pass the budget, those lines are in there. Uh, it's, it's, it's good that it's in there, but it is tentative. And it is tenuative, and we're not sure it's going to get through. So please go out there and um, and help us out by that. Now, if you are a candidate and you are finishing up your petitions, your deadline is 5 p.m. on Thursday. If you need help, our Board of Elections is always here to help any candidate, regardless of party. Uh, give us a call at 315-435-VOTE. Uh, if you're a Democrat, you know how to get in touch with me. I'll be able to help you get a cover sheet done, get your petitions filing, and hopefully this time next week, 
I'll kind of give you a rundown of who's on the ballot for the fall election. Uh, what do I got coming up this week? Uh, tomorrow I'll be w releasing a wonky Wednesday on the town of Lysander. It's a, an interesting town. It's normally a Republican uh, bastion, but it's been... Uh, Democrats have been surging there, although we're so far behind. Uh, and it's interesting to take a look at. It's one of the few towns that can't be broken up by county legislative districts or council districts. So we have to look at it as a whole. Uh, it'll be an interesting article. Um, on Thursday, I'll have my Zoom with Zarni, and I'm having Assemblyman Al Sturpey on. He's going to be talking about what's going on with the budget and, and all the things that are going on in Albany right now. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, this weekend, I'll be doing the Ask Me Anythings and all of that. I will be sticking with this format that I have right now of one Zoom with Zarni per week until later in the election season. It's been working out really well for me personally, but also for the guests to get a little bit more uh, time for those airings before uh, they become, uh, you know, a little old. So um, starting next month, we'll be switching the Zoom with Zarni's over to candidate interviews. I'll be interviewing all of the county ledge candidates, all of the town candidates, all of that, uh, hopefully, um, you know, all of the 15 different, or 17 different, 19 different towns, uh, 17 different county ledge candidates. Uh, we have uh, a few villages coming up in November. I'm sure we'll be talking to them as well. Uh, and of course, we'll have our city candidates that aren't in a primary and um, anybody in a primary, I'll be interviewing after the primary. Um, there's been a, a question in the chat. Uh, David asks, has there been any discussion in Albany about changing the process for getting on the ballot besides petitioning or caucuses? Is there any bill in either the assembly or Senate to allow for paying a fee to get on the ballot or by some other way? <clears throat> I have been unable to get anybody to put in a bill for paying a fee. Um, I actually think that's the best way to go. A, a filing fee of some kind will just get people on the ballot without um, any real uh, obstacle and then you can file petitions if you want to later on. Um, a lot of states do that but there is seems to be no movement in Albany for that. Uh, Rachel May has a, uh, a bill in there for online petitioning um, and uh, that's probably a couple of years away but she has a bill in uh, and hopefully there will be some movement towards that. I'll say one of the reasons why there is no movement towards getting a different way to get on the ballot and I've been doing this for 25 years now and every year we keep saying there's got to be a better way and there are better ways but the one of the reasons why there isn't a better way is because incumbents who all the assembly uh, people and senators are uh tend to not want challengers and the petition process weeds out a lot of challengers mm -hmm. that may otherwise um uh that may otherwise uh uh you know uh come forward. So that's probably the biggest obstacle to why we don't see a different uh, change in uh, petitions and how um, you people can get on the ballot. So while I would love to say differently, I think petitions are here to stay uh, for the most part. Um, and uh, yeah, well, it's very busy here today at the Board of Elections. And uh, I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to get back into the office and get, uh, ready for more petitions big turns in turn in at three o'clock today with 17 county ledge candidates coming in for the democrats uh david wants to know will we get absentee ballot drop boxes for this year's election uh i doubt it um we're still hearing that they want to change the absentee ballot process um but uh they uh they don't seem to be moving on that i think they will move on that but it'll be after the budget I don't know if they will authorize individual ballot boxes, and they definitely won't mandate it. Um, and if it's not mandated, then I doubt my Republican friends uh, on the other side of the aisle will uh, agree to it. What we will still have is those ballot boxes at the early voting sites. That will continue. Um, that is actually been allowed by law for decades and we've been doing it where absentee ballots can be dropped off at polling places. Um, so, uh, you know, with nine days of early voting, um, then, uh, do we need ballot boxes other way, 
other places across the county. Um, they're secure ballot boxes. Um, I don't, I don't know if I agree with getting those. I don't know if Onondaga needs them. I'm sure the city of New York City and others would want to have them. Um, but uh, I haven't seen any movement on a bill for that. So, all right, I'm going to get back into the office. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, is it Wonky Wednesday tomorrow, Tom Elizander. Zoom with Zarni on Thursday with Assemblyman Al Serby. And, uh, and I'll, uh, I'm hoping that uh, by the end of this week, we'll know where the elections are going to be come this year. And this time next week, we'll kind of have a mini run through of where uh, the contested races are. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Get the vaccine shot if you can. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can get out of this by July 4th and get almost back to normal. Bye-bye.